Let's discipline ourselves. If you cannot control your relationship with your phone, how are you going to be able to develop a relationship with Allah? If you cannot control your relationship with your phone, how are you going to develop a relationship with Allah? Forget about that Salah coming into place. We have to start with that Salatul Isha that we're speaking about. In many cases, we don't even fulfill Salatul Isha. When the Hadith says you read Salatul Isha with Jama'ah, you read Salatul Fajr with Jama'ah, you will have a reward of a person who has stood in worship all night that night. Is it difficult? But the answer is no. It depends on your belief in Allah and the last day. When you are clocking, you know, I'm thinking about something here. We work hard. We work very hard. And we work so hard if you are to get money for the deals that you engage in and you do more deals. Right now, if your phone rings and there is a deal worth a million naira, I think a lot of us would actually get up and say yes, yes, and walk out and at least do the deal and then come back maybe if we're lucky, right? Because that deal of a million naira is more important than sitting here in the case of a lot, right? A lot of people, to be honest. But why are we doing it? Because we want to more and more. We want more and more. A million, two million, five million, ten million, twenty million, a hundred million, a billion, two billion, and what else? It keeps on going and going and going. Wallahi, the bank of the Akhirah is more important. Wallahi, the currency of the Akhirah is more important. The deals that you're going to strike with Allah are more important. The currency is the deeds. And the hereafter is the time when you're going to see your bank balance. So be careful because the money you've amassed here will be wasted. But what you amass with Allah is never wasted. مَا عِنْدَكُمْ يَنْفَدْ وَمَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ بَاقَ Allah says it loud and clear. What you have with yourself is going to go. It's going to be completely depleted. But what you have deposited with Allah shall remain forever. You're going to see it. So this is why we say, do your Salatul Isha with Jama'ah. When the Prophet Sallallahu described the two raka'at of Sunnah, of Fajr, do you know what he said? Do you realize this, the, the, the weight of the statement? He knows that people love wealth. They want to earn. Like I said, if you had to earn a million, a million. For some people, they say, nah, a million is a bit too little. But the, the vast majority of us, a million naira is a lot of money. So to be honest, what they will say, Subhanallah, well, that's a deal. It's okay. It's halal. It's permissible. I want to let you know, my beloved brothers and sisters. The two units of Sunnah of Salatul Fajr are better than the whole world and whatever it contains. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. The whole world and whatever it contains there are two units of prayer at a certain time that the prophet ﷺ says in a sahih narration that these are better for you than the whole world and what it contains i'm not yet talking about the night we're talking of the beginning and the ending of it only because we are presuming you're asleep in the middle or on whatsapp astaghfirullah i hope not so those two raka'at we will only be able to fulfill them correctly as an act of worship for the sake of Allah, hoping that we will see its reward if we discipline ourselves, we believe in Allah and the last day, learn to sleep early, take that advice. You will find when you sleep early, your health improves, your relationships improve. People know you're at home, subhanallah. Everything else improves, even those who are younger. When you, are, when you sleep early, wallahi, your health improves. The condition of your heart. I was reading an article recently that, say, that says people who don't sleep on time and they have very erratic sleep, the heart becomes weak. So your lifespan is becoming smaller. Then you have suddenly we become minin. We say, but my death was written by Allah before I was born. How could that have changed anything? Now you're a mu'min when it suits you. You use iman in order to justify your wrongdoing, subhanallah, in order to defy what they are telling you. But when it comes to the true message and rule, then you don't want it. Allahu Akbar. Then you are waiting until the day that whip strikes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May that not happen to us. We don't need to wait for punishment to come down before we change for the sake of Allah. Learn to read your Salatul Isha. Learn to read your Salatul Fajr on time with pleasure 
What is the meaning of with pleasure? With pleasure would distinguish between those who are fulfilling salah because they have to do it and those who are fulfilling it because they want to do it. When you have to do it, you just do it. Like I said in my speech uh, somewhere uh, a few days ago, perhaps in Maiduguri, where I said, when you have to fulfill your salah and you're doing it only because you have to, Okay, we believe it's compulsory, we believe it's farad, so I do believe I have to, but over and above that, I want to as well. I want to as well. That's, that's why Allah tests you. You read your farad and walk away, well, you did it because you had to do it. But you read your farad and you added sunnah to it, now you're doing it because you want to do it. You see the difference? If you read your farad and walk away, perhaps people might say that, no, you fulfilled your duty. I agree with the statement. You fulfilled your duty, but... Are you reading Salah or fulfilling the Salah because you have to or you want to? If you want to, you're going to add a little bit of Sunnah, at least two units. Come on, for who? Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal al Alameen. When you're sitting at night with someone, haram, you're not supposed to be sitting with them. You love the time, you want to sit all night. But with your Maker, whom you are in desperate need of to breathe and for the heartbeat that you need 136,000 times a day, you can't spend five more minutes. Allahu Akbar. Five more minutes with Allah. Five minutes with Allah. Two more units. And when you finish that, you say, ah, let me make another two. Allahu Akbar. That is the way a mu'min should be. I love Allah so much. Let me take my time. So I was saying that if you want to know whether you're doing it as a pleasure and an honor, or whether you're doing it just to get done with it, then you need to ask yourself, what do I read in that salah? After Surah Al-Fatiha. There's something called default settings. You know what default settings are? Inna atayna an qul huwallah. Done. Those are default settings. And you're down. And the next unit, Okay, if you're doing it because those are the only two surahs you know, perhaps, mashallah, good. May Allah make it easy for you to learn more. But if you're doing it all the time, then you need to improve the quality of your ibadah. Allah does not need it. Remember, Allah is not poor. Ya ayyuhan nasu antumul fuqara'u ila Allah. Wallahu huwa al-ghaniyul hamid. O people, you are the ones in absolute need of Allah. Totally dependent upon Allah. Allah is absolutely independent. He doesn't need you at all. How can I just read inna atayna and qulhu wallah? When I, when I give a gift of... Let me give you an example. I went to Meduguri. You know what I loved there? The bakhur, the smell. MashaAllah. What do they call it? There's a name to it. MashaAllah. So I asked for it. And MashaAllah, they gave me quite a bit. SubhanAllah. You know, now you can't even ask for things because they'll give you a whole container full. But... The point is, it's packed and it's wrapped and it's nice and it looks presentable and so on. Wallahi, when we're giving someone a gift, we want to wrap it, pack it, make it so nice, make it look presentable so that they can accept it from us. You know, they can accept it from us. No one opened my hand and said, open your hand, Sheikh, and put a few drops of the powder and a few cracks here. No, they didn't. They packed it nicely. It's in a jar. The jars are in a box. The box is in another packaging and so on and so forth. You open and you open and you open and it's a gift. So what happens is normally when we give each other's gift, you know what happens to us? The heart of the little children especially is looking forward to that gift to say, wow, and you open one. And then you open it again. And then you open another one and you think, and then when you see a small little Malteser inside, you start thinking, gosh, what happened here? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. But when you see lovely packaging and then you see something that's of value, you appreciate it. Wallahi, you want to package a small gift to a human being in a lovely way. Package your salah in the most beautiful way. Package your salah in the most beautiful way. It is for the supreme deity who doesn't need it at all. Imagine you're a small person giving a huge wealthy man a gift. 
and he really appreciates it because it's the it's the it's the thought that counts that's what they say right but how you presented it and how you gave it and etc etc it means a lot so with allah take your time with salah that's packaging it when you say allahu akbar concentrate and you know what it is normal for every single one of us without a single exception to lose a little bit of concentration here and there the, the level of concentration differs from person to person but our duty is to continue bringing our mind and heart back to it the minute you divert shaitan tries with you you bring it back you know you go you bring it back you bring it keep on bringing it back that is what your salah is all about to try your best to have as much concentration as possible you won't have a hundred percent but you need to have more than what you had yesterday and you need to keep trying and don't let shaitan make you think my salah was a waste of time it was never a waste of time for as long as it is for the sake of allah alone and done in conformity to what the prophet ﷺ has taught it's not a waste of time you keep trying and you hope that allah will accept it because all allah wants from you is the fact that you tried that's all he doesn't need the ibadah he just needs you to have tried so your ibadah will never be perfect but the perfection of allah is such that he will accept an imperfect ibadah for as long as you tried in accordance with what you were supposed to do that is Allah. So now what has happened? You fulfill your salah, you try to read a surah, you learn another one. And if you only know those two surahs, at least you read them slowly. You try to learn their meaning. You concentrate and you don't just get your salah done with. I can tell you, I'm also guilty of sometimes without thinking. We say, brother, I'll come. Can I just quickly finish my salah? That word quickly is an insult to Allah. Wallahi, may Allah forgive me. Let me just quickly get done with my salah. We say that word quickly and fast and whatever. Don't worry, I'll just be a minute. How can you say that? It's Allah. It's Allah whom you are dealing with. Come on. Just say, my brother, please wait for me. I'll fulfill my salah. Or you know what? I'm, I'm about to read my salah or fulfill it. Just wait. And then you go and you enjoy. Allahu Akbar. Salli salatam wadda'in. Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, Read your salah as though it's your last chance to do it.